Tell you doing? Hey, how awesome are our young people? Like, you know, they might not have it all together, they might not always say the right things, but they say what God is speaking to them, and they share um, with passion, with joy, with energy, and that's what we need, right? Yes. So this morning, um, like, if you've noticed um, throughout this service, our theme has been the voice of God, and it's something that we have been um, learning about, have been talking about, um, not only in youth, but in our connect groups as well. And this morning, we wanted to do something a little different because we actually have several of our youth who are, um, you know, some of them have grown up in this church or they've, they've been here for a few years now and they're actually graduating from high school. So we've got at least six, I think there's a couple more who aren't here, but we've got at least six who are moving on from school this year onto something new. Some of them are actually even leaving Hamilton, which is sad, so we won't see them as much anymore. But this morning we wanted them to give, sorry, we wanted to give them an opportunity to share with you um, what God has been saying to them, where God has been, um, call, and where God is calling them to next. So if I can invite up our school leavers, that is uh, Benji, Isaac, Abby, uh, you guys can come up and just grab a seat up here, um, and we're just going to have a little chat with them about what they're doing. It's Alia, and Tatui, and, and Millie. Okay, Stanley is also one of them, but he's actually not here this morning. He's doing around the bridges, so he's going to be um, running, and yeah. So, so these are our school leaders this year. Aren't they a, a good looking bunch? Yeah. One's actually already left school earlier, but she's back to um, just share what she's been doing this year, since she didn't have a chance to do that last time. But um, Ikos, is there enough space for you there? <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna, first of all, ask them to go around share their name, their age, um, and one thing that God has been saying to them throughout this year. So I'll start with Benji and you guys can just pass it along and um, yeah, let's just listen to what God has been sharing with them this year. Uh, good morning church, I'm Benjamin, I'm 16 and something that God's been doing in my life this year has been uh, uh, in school, uh, there's been a lot of, well, with COVID and that, uh, a lot of you know, issues, but uh, We've actually had someone coming in uh, every Thursday, prayer groups at school. So yeah, it's been pretty good. And I got asked to um, help lead it. So yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, uh, hello, my name is Isaac, and I'm 18. <laughs> oh, the thing that God's been saying to me is just to really open my eyes up and my mind up because there's so much more that like he's teaching me like about himself, his love and like his kingdom and that and yeah I've just been learning heaps about that. It's pretty cool. So, yeah. it yeah. uh, kia ora. my name is Tetui Lewis. I'm seventeen. Uh, something um, God's been telling me this year is that he has a plan and a purpose for my life. Uh, my name is Melly and I'm 17. And, uh, I think something that God has been saying to me is just to get involved with, like, with everyone. Mom. Like, yeah, it's just fellowship. Uh, hello, my name is Abigail and I am 19 years old. Um, you know that when you get to the end of the year, sort of November, December, you start losing all motivation for work because you're like, oh, the end of the year is almost here. I don't really put in that much effort. The end of school is essentially that, but over 13 years worth of running and trying to keep motivated. So it's been quite a, quite a slope. And I started questioning, why, why do I need to be motivated? Why do I even care about finishing well? And I've always been the kind of person who sticks to a plan and plans like three years ahead. But this year, God has been teaching me that sometimes it's okay to let go of that and look around you and find what gives you joy and use that to motivate you. And yeah, that's what God's been teaching me. 
Uh, good morning, church. Um, I'm Leah, as you have heard. I'm 18 years old. And there's been so many things that God has been saying to me this year. Um, but I guess I've narrowed down to one. Um, I think a big thing that God has revealed to me this year is actually how valuable I am in His eyes. Um, I know going, so I finished school last year, um, but I know throughout all of high school I struggled with accepting who I am and who God wanted me to be. But um, this year He's just revealed like um, my calling, and um, I love Psalms 30, oh, Psalms 139, um, when it talks about how. God knew our innermost being and um, he knitted us in our mother's wombs and if you know knitting is such a careful process so like God is such an intentional God and that um, yeah I'm just it's great to know that um, how valuable I am cause, because then I can step into my calling and um, yeah so that's just one thing that God's been saying to me this year wow. but yeah awesome. All right, so yeah, God's been saying a lot to these guys this year, and um, what we want to know next is, where is God calling you next? What is your next chapter? Um, you're finished school now, you're on to your next thing. Can you share with us, where is God taking you next year? Okay, I guess I'll start. Um, so I'm actually about to graduate at Equipus College up in Auckland. Um, so it's basically a Bible college. Um, but yeah, so... Leading up to the end of the year, I actually had no clue where God wanted me to go next year. And um, actually, my college offers a second year, but I was like, nah. Um, so, so, and because all my friends were doing it, I was like, I don't want to do it just because they're doing it. I don't want to be like a follower. Like, and I hadn't received my own conviction, but then someone said to me, um, you know, if you are, because I, okay, so someone said to me, if if you haven't heard God call you somewhere, then he's not finished with you. And so I've actually decided to do this again year. And so I'll be doing a diploma in Christian, Christian studies next year. I'm going up to the University of Auckland and I'm going to be studying a degree in engineering. I'm thinking of specializing in chemical engineering, but you never know where God may lead me. So watch this space. And just take a moment there and let you guys know that Abby, she had her school awards this week and she not only won lots of awards, she actually got the Ducks Awards. So oh. she is oh. found some motivation somewhere to uh, keep going because it's not easy to make it to the very top and be the best of the best, so well done. Yeah. Oh, I'm not really sure, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'll probably just go off what God tells me to do. So, yeah. um, uh, next year I'm going to be going to Te Aroha College. It's a, it's a high school. I'm going to go there to pursue um, my passion, which is basketball. I'm going to um, try to become the best I can be. Uh, yeah. uh, God opened the door for me to go to university, so I'll probably be at Wakato here. And yeah, I'm not sure. It was God or my dad that was telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But like what I'm studying is a passion of mine, so God put that passion in my heart, so yeah. <laughs> Next year, uh, well I've left school early, year 11, because um, I believe God's given me a gift to play, um, play music and I'm um, going to pursue that. I'm um, going to study at Vision College next Yay. year and doing a diploma or bachelor's degree. Yeah. So yeah, so these guys have some big things um, coming up and you know they, they probably don't know everything that's going to happen like Abby said, even though they might try and plan, you know, I'm going to be here for three years, I might do this. We know that God has a way of calling people into different directions and um, you know, when he calls us, are we going to obey him or are we just going to do what we want to do? So that's a challenge for you guys is as you go on your journeys, 
be sure to keep listening for that voice of God, even if it doesn't quite go with what you've planned. Know that his plans are always better. Cool. So something that um, we also want to, is for these guys, since these are the older um, youth and are, you know, moving up in the world, we wanted them to actually share something to the younger youth, to the up-and-coming ones, to our um, intermediates, and if there's any kids left in the room, just to encourage them. Um, and the first one is um, about youth, because these guys are all big members of our youth group. And I wanted um, to ask you guys, what's something that you've learned in youth group over your time that you would encourage some of the other younger ones, you know, it's, it's a cool place to, to be. Uh, yeah, one thing that I've learned, and it's definitely something for the younger generation to learn, is um, be more um, confident uh, about uh, your faith in Jesus. Uh, throughout the years at um, youth group, uh, I've grown a lot, and now I can, I'm not shy to tell someone that I'm a Christian. Wow. Yeah, uh, youth group's a fun place, so if you're young and want to have fun, you can come to youth group. Uh, do lots of games and fun things. Yeah. yeah, that's not the main reason I go. Yeah, I go. Not for the girls, but for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what was the question? <laughs> um, something that you'll learn from being a youth that you want to Um, um, uh, since I've been playing basketball, um, I don't really get time to go to youth group on Fridays because I play, but every time I show up, there, uh, there's always new people, new faces, everyone's smiling, um, the main um, thing I learned um, from coming to youth is that, like, no matter, even, even if you've been only one time, and then you come back, everyone will remember you, everyone will know you, and you will just be welcome, no matter what. So. Oh, something that I've encouraged, oh, something that I've encouraged the young ones is um, just to know that God is always with you. You may not see yeah, you know, you don't see him, but he's always with you through the hard times. When we come to youth, we have a lot of energy and we run around and we play games, but at the same time, youth is kind of like a stop to the week because it's outside the normal routine of things and it's just a place where you can actually take time to slow down and really think about things. And I think that's so important. So often we're caught up in, oh, what am I doing tomorrow? I need to make sure that I get this ready and I get this ready. But youth, you just come and you breathe. So I would encourage the youth to use it as a place to just exist and to use it as a place to listen to the voice of God because we don't get time to do that. So take the time to stop and listen. That's what I would say. Okay. <clears throat> I haven't been in heart grief that long. Um, I think just started like two years ago, but if there's anything I've learned is um, how great youth leaders are and um, just an encouragement is if you're going through stuff, tell your youth leaders or tell people at youth, that's probably the safest place you can share um, and you know, there's no condemnation at youth um, and Leisha and Bingy are really great, so yeah. We're gonna miss you guys. I mean, even though they're graduating and they're getting older, you know, the doors always welcome for you guys to come back to youth. It's not like, okay, you're gone now, goodbye. We don't want to see you again. It's like, you know, doors always open for you guys to come back. Um, so I've got just a couple of last questions. It's really about hearing the voice of God, and I wanted to ask you guys. You don't all have to answer. Just if you've got an answer, how do you actually hear from God? What's a way that you hear from God or hear the voice of God? Uh, one way that I hear from God or hear the voice of God is I just put on some worship music, lie down on my bed and just soak in the spirit, listen to what he's saying. My way of hearing God is pretty similar. Like I try to clear my mind and just, just sit in his presence and just ask him to yeah, fill my mind. He'll be like, give me a picture or something. Or, yeah, or you'll say something that will sound like. 
Me thinking something? Yeah, mine's similar to Ozzy. But, um, I'm, like, when I play basketball, or, like, just by myself, I'll be shooting around. And, like, there's no one around. And I can just, I'm just in my thoughts, shooting. And most of the thoughts I'm thinking is, like, things from God, I'm pretty sure. Just uh, sounds like me, but I'm pretty sure it's God. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just, I see him, like, through the day, like, uh, like I hear him through the day. It just comes up naturally. But I don't know why, but I'll be doing something and just, he'll just speak. And to me, you know, like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so I don't hear God like in solitude. Um, I hear God through my environment. Um, for example, I just I went to Wanganui for this missions week like two weeks ago, and um, I was just doing some gardening because you know gardening men. And um, I was just I was just weeding, and I noticed that um, these weeds looked like they had flowers on the top, but you know they're weeds. And so just through that, I just heard God tell me, you know, like. Weeds in our life may look good for us, but they're actually really bad. And so, um, yeah, I just hear God through environments. He'll just like randomly pop things in my head. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so God can speak to us in different ways. And like these guys said, you know, it's not sometimes, it's not always a voice that they hear, but it's something that they see, something that they can see, it's something that, you know, it might be a line that, and in a worship song. And it's amazing that God actually speaks through what these guys are passionate about. I mean, I don't know if Ali is passionate about weeding, but, you know, to do with us basketball, BG, listening to worship music. Like, so God is speaking in everything, but, you know, it's up to us. Are we listening? Are we as open to hear? Because God can use anything. I remember one time in our, in our connect group, we had, um, we did this, like, um, lesson or just like a practical thing where we had to get an object and we had to say share like a little message about what God was saying and we had like random objects like um, a candle or like a cup and like all these things and you know it was amazing like what kind of message God can share through just random objects like yeah so the encouragement for us is are our ears open are we listening because God can speak through anything Cool. All right. The last question that I have um, for you guys is: um, Why is it difficult for us to hear from God? What things can stop us, like hearing God's voice? I want to first. Um, One hundred percent ourselves. Um, we block ourselves from hearing from the voice of God. Um, we place yourself in the certain environments. Um, also, if you. Um, so like how I said that I used to devalue myself. When you're so self-absorbed, then you're like blocking yourself from hearing from God. So, yeah. What was the question? I guess distractions. Just like your phone. I don't know. It's just... <laughs> um, just... I don't know, being in a bad environment and being with like, like um, around people that can influence you in a bad way and worldly things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess just not practicing like, or just practicing like praying and worshiping him because, and like reading his word because he speaks, he can speak through like, when I like, can speak through the word and through worship, when he can speak to you when you're praying to him. So if you if you're not really engaging with him in that way, you, you could probably find it hard to hear back from him because he kind of got to get something from you to give something back. Well, yeah. All right. Cool, so I'm just going to um, wrap up what these guys have said, but I just want you guys to give them a big round of applause. And if you have any questions, if you have any tea, um, you can go and just catch up with them, see what, the, you know, what their journey is going to be like. And um, yeah, but we just want to say as well thank you for um, everyone who has prayed for 
us, for our youth group, for these guys and who supported us because, you know, we're not, as a big part of the church, we're not just, you know, the church is here and the youth is here, we're actually one body and we're one group and the youth are part of this church and we really appreciate um, everyone who has sown into the youth by praying, by giving, by whatever it might be because that is what has put these guys forward and is pushing them to their next chapter and what God is calling them. So um, thank you guys. I, I hope that you guys have received something from what these guys have shared. Even though they are young, they have some wisdom. So um, yeah, thank you guys. children are laughing and you know it's what some of us some of the youth have shared this morning that the voice of God is all around us he is speaking and let us not go away from here without having heard something from him this morning I pray that you've heard something from him this morning and it might not have been a voice telling you something but it might have been a picture it might have been a sense or a feeling it might have been that you were feeling heavy when you came in and now you're feeling joyful and now you're feeling free. So there's many ways that God can speak to us. There's just a couple of verses that I wanted to um, share with you guys. The first one is in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. It says this, God who at various times and in various ways in time past to the fathers, I spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, that in these days he has spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. You know what this verse tells me? That you know, back in the Bible, back in the Old Testament, God would only speak to people through the prophets. There were occasions where he would speak to like Abraham, Moses, but other times he would only speak through the prophets. So you had to be like the anointed man or woman of God to hear from God. But this verse tells us that now, now because of Jesus, we actually have access to hear from Him all the time. That we don't have to hear a preacher speaking. We don't have to hear someone who is, you know, at the front or a great worship singer to hear the voice of God. He can speak to each and every single one of us in our own ways. The second verse I have to share with you is from Job chapter 33, verse 14, and it says, For God may speak in one way or in another, or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men or slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Now what that verse is saying, like all of these guys said, God speaks in some ways to some people, some ways to another. And you know, you might not understand what God says to me, and I might not understand what God says to you, but He can use different ways. Dreams, visions at night, as we're sleeping, that's when He is speaking to us. So let's be open to hearing in these different ways what God is saying. Let's not just expect that, oh, He's going to speak to me in a voice like how I'm speaking to you. Because there's so many ways God speaks to us. The last verse that I want to share with you comes from Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15, and it says, Today, can everyone say today? Today, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. What that verse is saying is, if you've heard his voice today, or if you've heard something that has made you say, man, I want to know more about God. I want to hear more from Him. Do not harden your hearts. Do not turn away from that. Instead, press forward into that. Go for more of that. Pursue more of that. Because there's nothing that God wants more than for us to start engaging with Him. Like Isaac said, we have to start actually practicing 
hearing from God and taking time, putting the phone down, putting the distractions down to hear from God because He is always speaking. So I just want to close off with a prayer this morning and I actually want to pray if you have been struggling to hear from God, if you're not sure what your next step is, where God is calling you next, I just want to pray that God would open your spiritual eyes, open your spiritual ears, that your sense gates would be open this morning to hearing from Him in every way that He speaks to us. Um, if we can just close our, close our eyes, bow our heads. If that's you this morning and you want to hear from God, would you just stand with me? If you feel like, man, you know, I don't know if I'm hearing from God. I don't know if it's the right voice that I'm hearing or I don't know what God is saying to me. I can't recognize the voice of God. Would you just stand and we're going to pray together that God would unlock your spiritual senses this morning so that you would be able to hear clearly from Him.